Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh. Today we're gonna to show you a cool solution to overcome one of the problems that we have to face a lot. Now if you've ever seen a lot of our videos, we love third person FPV flying. The only downside to that is oftentimes you see static. The reason you see that static is because we're recording the downlink from a DVR or digital video recorder. That means if we're flying longer range or, or get some kind of interference, you're gonna see a lower grade standard definition footage, sometimes with some breakup. Now a really cool solution is to actually record from a session and then also have your FPV. But that can be very costly and also very heavy. This session weighs about 72 grams and can range from $150 to $300. Now one thing we wanted to do is we wanted to show a modular design where you could simply go ahead and build a stack but have it be able to transfer from plane to plane. And that gives you your FPV signal, your HD video recording all through one camera. What we designed here is we designed some simple plates that can be reconfigured in many different ways to give you everywhere from low profile all the way to a servo tilt on your camera. Now if you already have a run cam split and like to do this, we have an awesome little affordable kit that can make this possible for you. But if you choose to buy the run cam split through our store, we'll have links down below, we're going to throw this kit in for free. So today what we're going to show you is how to build an awesome little FPV cube that's going to give you your HD video recording 1080 60 frames per second with our simple plates and the most complicated configuration. So let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. We're also gonna give you free plans for everything that we do here. Now for this build, there's basically two different formats that you can do. It's gonna be the shorter format here with either the camera mounted on the top or in front, or it's gonna be the more complicated format where you actually have a servo that can pan left and right. Now all three of these are basically built the exact same. The only difference is the amount of spacers that you use to change the height. So depending on what application you're using for an airplane, you may want to make this a little bit higher or a little bit shorter. What we're going to do is show you the most complicated build. This is going to be the highest format, but also is going to have the servo, and we're going to show you how to change out the wires for a longer lead. Now whatever version you build of this, whether it's the short or the tall one, they all basically assemble the exact same. The only difference is when we show you how to build the servo feature, we're going to mount the video transmitter vertically instead of upside down on the bottom of the top plate. Now in our kit, we even give you some extra parts that you may or may not use, like vibration dampening bobbins, just so you can configure it just the way you want it. Now depending on the application that you're using, you can use all sorts of different antennas. We're going to be flying fixed wing at a longer range, so we're going to use these TBS Triumphs that we like so much that give us really good video signal. But if you want, you can even make this shorter by using a little luminaire button, like this. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and get our materials order. Once again, we're going to be showing you how to build the most complicated version, which is the pan on the servo. So before we start construction, we're going to go ahead and put the longer cable on this. Now, if you're not comfortable with opening things up like the sensor board and the, uh, the PCB board here, I would strongly suggest that you make a non-servo version of this. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. Now, because this is going to be servo driven and it's going to be higher than normal, we're going to go ahead and swap out this cable for the longer one. Be very careful when you do this and also take special note of the little keepers here because we're going to want to go ahead and put the cable in the same way that we took it off. To remove this cable, we're going to very carefully pop this little black edge up and then this little double sided tape here, we'll peel that up very carefully. Anytime you're working with electronics, you don't ever really want to force anything. You just want to let it naturally pull out. I'm going to go ahead and save this little sticky tape and put it on the side here. Now you're going to notice here that the brass is facing down towards the PCB board. That's exactly how we want to replace it with the longer one. Our next step is with our pins facing downward, we're going to go ahead and slide this in. Once we have it slid in all the way, we'll press down on our keeper and it's nice and firmly attached. So for this next step, we're going to go ahead and remove the cable from the camera that you see here. I'd strongly suggest that you use a very clean, dust-free environment for this. So if you're working in your garage or someplace where maybe you just sand it or you have some dust, go ahead and find a clean area because you don't want dust getting on your sensor. So make sure that you remove your screws and be very careful when removing this here. Don't go ahead and pull on the cable to remove the sensor board. Pop it up, lift out of place. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the lens upside down. Our next step is to carefully flip the little tiny release here. Be very careful not to pop it off. And with a rocking motion, we're going to rock out the ribbon cable. Now you're going to notice that the contacts on the ribbon cable are facing up this time. So brass is facing up. We're going to take our longer uh, cable now. We're going to slide it into place very carefully. press the keeper down. 
So the next step now is to reinstall the cable. Now keep in mind that the ribbon cable came out of the top of the camera. You're not going to be able to put this board in upside down because it has a little index mark. Now we're going to replace our four screws. Putting a longer cable is also a really great mod. If you want to mount the camera, say, on the tail for a good third-person view, but you don't want the extra weight and the drag of the control board. All right, our longer cable is now in place. We're ready to go ahead and build our cube. Now, for building our cube, we're going to build it from the bottom going up. So what we want to do is we want to find our shorter standoffs and our second to shorter standoffs that you see here. These are going to be the ones with the threads on the top, and they're included in your split kit. So here's our shortest one. Here's the next to shortest one. These are the ones we're going to want to use first. We're going to take our shorter standoffs and on the bottom, the side with the ST door, we're going to slide it through the hole and we're going to screw the second to shortest ones on the top. We're going to do this on all four corners. All you need to do is make these snug. These are made out of nylon, so if you over tighten them, they could strip or break. Now that we have the base built, let's go ahead and put our bottom plate on. Now we're going to want to line up the bottom plate with our SD card door, just like you see here. The reason is, is when we want to put an SD card in here, we need to be able to push the door in and open it up all the way. Now these parts aren't needed necessarily, but these do give you a really good ability to be able to fasten this down even easier. On one side, we can see that we have holes that will allow for screws or for Velcro straps. I'm going to mount this with the Velcro straps being outwards on the opposite side of the door. We're now going to take our longer screws and we're going to push it through and screw it in place. Now for the FT Simple Scout, what I did is I actually used these little flanges and I pushed the barbecue skewers in on both sides. So this actually locked down and kept it from coming out. So in case you weren't wanting to build the servo version here, we can make a quick explanation on how you build these other two versions. Uh, we're not going to use these studded, but we'll use the included slightly by two millimeters longer standoffs. And then what we would do is we'd stick our VTX to the very top here, and then that would mount straight over top like you see here. Now if you're going to go ahead and adhere and put the mount for the servo on the top here, I strongly recommend just making it slightly higher and screwing these on the top like you see there. Now with this kit, like I said, we do give you a lot of different lengths and standoffs. We're going to use the longest standoffs next. Let's go ahead and screw down the longest standoffs on the top of the studs that are connecting the control board to the bottom plate. The reason we're using the longest standoffs in this application is so we're able to actually put the servo down without making contact with the control board. This is also going to give us the clearance needed so we can mount our video transmitter vertically to give it the best airflow. So our next step is we're going to go ahead and pop out the center piece because we're going to be putting our servo through. Now if you're not planning on using a servo but just want a fixed mount, you can go ahead and leave this piece in place. Pop this out. Like you see here, these two little knockouts here are just for the ribbon cable in case you want to route it with it inside. I'm going to knock it out anyway. So the orientation that we're going to mount this board on the top is like this. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and push our servo through so that the servo arm is as far away as the antenna as possible. We're just going to guide this right down through, like you see here. And we're going to use the servo screws that are included with the kit and screw it into place. So we've already centered our servo and you can see that we've mounted our X-type servo arm on the top here. Make sure that this is centered before you go any further. So the center piece that we popped out, you notice it looks a little funny. The reason we did this is so this will slide right over the top here and it'll spread the load out evenly along this whole X-servo. You can later come along if you want and you can cut this shorter. We're also going to use the little tiny washers we have on our split kit to put on here just to spread the load out even more. What we're going to do is we're going to take this little plate that we knocked off and we're going to use this as a base plate for our camera holder. Now make sure when you mount this that the camera holder actually points towards where the antenna hole is going to be. Just line it up on our screw hole there. Alright, so that's one in. We're going to go ahead and put the next one in here. 
Servo screws are coming from our servo and the washer is coming from our split kit. All right, so before we put the top plate on, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our wire is going out the back end of where our pot is. Now we can go ahead and lay this over. And use your screws and screw it down in place. So now you notice that we have three holes on our camera. We're going to use the very top hole on the camera to line up with the top hole of our mounting bracket. Included is a couple of really nice little screws. These use two millimeter hex drive. And we're just going to get them started and finger tight. Go to the opposite side, do the same thing. Next screw will be the middle one. So now we can go ahead and kind of get the angle that we like. I like to have it just point slightly down. And then we can tighten it the rest of the way. So our next step is to install our video transmitter. Now the video transmitter we're going to be using is a TBS Unified Pro High Voltage. Now what the HV version does is it gives us a stronger selectable signal from 25 milliwatt all the way up to 800 milliwatt. And the reasons why it's called high voltage is it takes anywhere from, I believe, a two to a six cell battery. And the nice thing about that too is it also gives an output of five volts, which is exactly what the split needs. All right, earlier we told you that we're gonna show you how to do this without having to solder a single thing. And the way we're gonna do that is with this TBS Unified Pro wire harness. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be taking this connector off and deep pinning it. We don't need this white wire. And we're gonna go ahead and turn it to what you see here. Now to do this, we're going to deep pin the connector from our split wiring harness and we're going to install it on this one here. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take a very fine tip razor blade and we're going to carefully lift up the pins that hold our connector pins down and slide them out one at a time. Make sure you do one pin at a time so you don't mix up your connections or reverse polarity. So our first step here is we're going to go ahead and remove one pin at a time. And we're going to carefully go underneath this and lift it up very, very carefully and slide the pin out. Don't bend this pin too much or you can break it. There we go. To reinstall the pin, make sure that the barb is facing the proper direction and simply slide it in until you hear a click. When you're done changing over the connectors, you're going to go from a four wire to what you see here as a three wire. You're also going to notice that that white wire that we removed, we also deep pinned from the bottom connector right here. Our next step is to mount the VTX. We're going to go ahead and use the double sided tape that's supplied with our VTX kit. I'll stick that right on the very back here. Now you're going to notice our little channel change button is going to be easily accessible on the very bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and slide this in. And we're going to press it firmly against the side of the servo. Now we can take our little pigtail and pass it through the top. So if you want to, you can actually screw down the pigtail using these low profile screws. Not every antenna is the same, so I would strongly encourage you, if you use these, make sure your antenna fully seats on the bottom. If you have any interference, the antenna may be loose. We're just going to go ahead and leave this loose so the antenna can screw nice and tight. Our next step is to make our connections. We're going to go ahead and carefully press this into place and you're going to hear click. I'm carefully going to route this to the very back and making sure that the pins line up with the connector properly, we're going to press this in place. While I'm out, I'm also going to route our little power connector here out the back end so we can plug out the battery. Now we're not going to want this cable moving around loose, so I'm just going to go ahead and take a couple zip ties here, and I'm going to zip tie this connector so it doesn't interfere with the actual uh, antenna itself. So our next step is I'm going to turn the camera all the way away from us. I'm going to install one more zip tie on the very bottom standoff. 
to get everything nice and routed. Last step before powering up is we're always going to make sure our VTX antenna is on. If you try to power this up without a VTX antenna, it can cause damage to your video transmitter. So originally the split could only take 5 volts. The nice thing now is since it's a filtered 5 volts, you can power this cube from anywhere from 2 to 6 cells. So now our little FPV pod is all built. Our next step is to get a screen and make sure everything works. One set of goggles that we really loved were the Marvel Vision 2. We liked them so much, we actually gave them some custom specs and we got our own branded version. The neat thing about the Marvel is it has diversity, but also has a pop-out screen. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this out real quick. Put it to the side. Just like this being for under 150, this whole goggle setup, even with the HDMI, the DVR, the diversity, is all under 150 as well too. Let's go ahead and power this up. Turn it on, take off our lens cap, and then we'll do an auto search. And there we go. It's in memory full because there's no memory card in it. Now the neat thing about this is when you have a memory card in it, the second that you power it on, it automatically starts recording. This also has a Wi-Fi module, so you can change settings, you can activate record, you can take photos, and a lot of other really cool features right from your phone and from the free app. And now the nice thing is when this is on the airplane and you tie this into one of your auxiliary channels or into your rudder if you're flying a three channel, you can look to the left and to the right. Now to make our servo go to the left or the right, there's a wide variety of ways we can do this. We can assign it to its own channel where it works off a slider, or if you're flying something like the Scout in three channel mode, what I like to do is actually plug it into the rudder channel, so that way as I'm flying I can look left and right with my rudder, and then bank left and right with my ailerons. Now that everything tests out, the next step is to mount it in the airplane and go have some fun. Alright, one common question is probably going to be is how do we mount this? Uh, just to show you externally, easiest way to mount this is to set it down in the cockpit and then use these barbecue skewers to either go on the outside or in this case on the inside and push it all the way to the forward and all the way to the back. That's going to lock it down into place. So on the Scout I actually didn't need the wider feet. I actually set it right down in there in a real twisting motion. And just like we put our power pods in, this slides right on through. Now this can easily be removed, but it's also in there nice and strong. Friends, we want to sincerely thank you for watching and thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. As we said before, all the links to repeat this experience is going to be down below in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe. We put out about four or five videos a week. We'd love to make sure you see them all. Hit that notification bell to make sure you get an alert every time we post a video. We'll see you next time.